face blend has some pretty amazing capabilities. In this case, you'll see I have a couple of spheres set up. Now, these spheres are not touching, nor are they Boolean or anything like that. They're two separate solid bodies. I'm going into face blend, and I'm going to pick sphere number one. I'm going to reverse this. Sphere number two, I'm going to reverse this. And what you'll see is I can create a bridge between those two spheres so long as the fillet radius is big enough to bridge that gap. Now, something to note when I am creating a face blend, you'll see the first sphere is black, the second sphere is green. I'm going to go back in, I'm going to specify that sphere again, reverse that, pick you, reverse that, and this time I'm just going to simply select OK. You'll notice that the solid has assumed the attributes of the initial surface that I selected, the black sphere. I'm going to undo that with a Control Z on the keyboard. I'm going back into Face Blend. I'm going to pick the green sphere first, reverse that black sphere, reverse that. This time I select OK as is and you'll note that this is now green. So it's important to understand that when you're applying a face blend if you have a set of faces with a specific grouping of attributes, color and such, and you want those to be the overriding attributes for the final face blend and all things joined and associated, then you're going to want to make sure you pick that face chain first. In this case it's real easy. Two spheres, not even touching. They're completely separate entities. So whichever one I pick is the one that sets the precedent for the uh, color or attributes that I have set.